Hello everyone, it's GigaBeef here, and today we're going to be talking about the MCX. The question here is, should we consider the MCX in the meta at all? We typically don't see this weapon very much, and it's kind of for a good reason, because some platforms are just so good right now, like the 762-39 rounds and 762 NATO. However, I did manage to kill two D2 Exocampers with this weapon, which was pretty funny, but that's to come later on at the end of the video. The MCX itself is a bit of a strange weapon in Tarkov because while it broadly resembles the M4 and other similar 5.56 guns, it uses its own special ammo type the 300 Blackout. This fits into the same magazines as 5.56, so be careful when you're loading otherwise you might end up with a non-functional weapon if you tried to use 55A1 instead by accident in it. It's purchasable from Skier 3 for 94,500 rubles, which is fairly punchy as it often is for trader weapons. There is also a barter, but unfortunately, because it consists of one G-Phone and one 1G one Phone, GPXs are super expensive at the moment, around 110k normally, so it rarely makes sense to do. On the flea itself, you have to be careful because most MCXs come from raiders, meaning that many of these don't have 100 durability to start with. Also, you can see a variety of different attachments and barrels on these because of this, so make sure to look out for versions with the 229mm barrel if at all possible, which is the longest version. You will see why this is important when we look at the modding in a bit. It's hard to put a precise cost on a new 100 durability MCX from the fleet because I have seen them all the way down to 45k and sometimes only purchasable at 88k so it can be very random. Now one of the major issues I guess with the MCX is the practical recoil. Because this weapon has a high fire rate of 800, just like the M4, it suffers badly from the jump in recoil given to us in 1212, just like the M4. However, you can get it down to a manageable level and interestingly the return to centre time on the MCX is superior to that of the M4. This means that even versus the lowest recoil M4 that you can build, vertically the MCX is honestly about the same in terms of how it jumps. As you can see though, the issue is really the horizontal recoil and there's not really much that we can do about it. Because of this, the MCX tends to be better suited to CQB as a slightly shorter, slightly cheaper version of the modded M4 with the same if not better time to kill due to the ammunition which we'll talk about later. The best rounds are also quite slow at 635 meters per second as well which even further puts the MCX into this close range camp. So as usual we're going to look at the minimum recoil build and there are some interesting takeaways from this actually but we're going to use Skier's preset because it comes in all shapes and sizes on the flea market but Skier's preset is typically what you might see when you're looking on there for different weapons if you look out for ones in particular that have the 229 barrel and not the 171 because this changes what muzzles you can attach. For keeping this barrel, it's also useful if it already has the T-lock or the taper lock muzzle adapter and also the two port brake because this means that all you need to do is stick on the SRD 762QD sound suppressor and you're good with the best in slot suppressor with this particular combination. Next we're going to take the 8 inch keyboard handguard and change that over to the 12 inch version instead and we're going to add one of the rails which is usually the strike as it's very slightly cheaper than the other one because this is priced in dollars. Let's grab this and then we'll put on the RK24 grip as we always do for the best in slot recoil versions. For pistol grips, no, it doesn't actually affect the recoil, but we'll add the growl. Let me just pull up the stats here. And then in terms of the stock, we'll replace over the lightweight stock with the retractable adapter, which allows us to do all of our unholy magic at the rear end of the weapon, Mesa Tactical Crosshair, as you might imagine, and then also the PRS Gen 3 one, either the gray or the black, it doesn't really matter for the minimum recoil. From here, in terms of sights, you might just want to add the Chris Defiance at the front and also at the back as these are the lowest weight and add plus one ergonomics. And this takes us to 31 ergo and 43 recoil. So it's not actually that difficult to build this particular weapon from the one that comes from Skier. Now, a couple of observations. So if you swap over to the short barrel, as I alluded to earlier, let me add the gas block on. In terms of what you can put on for muzzles, you can only put on the T-lock like we saw already, or the Gemtech, the Silencer Co Hybrid, or the standalone SRD. Now, none of these are very good, and it's only the T-Lock is actually any good at all. And because we get a better recoil reduction from the longer barrel, we basically want to use this one because it really is much better than the short version. Now, interestingly, on the long barrel, we can use the Knight's Armament QDC, which you can't use with the long handguard. So if you swap over to the short handguard, you can put this one on and you can add on this QDC. Now, we know that this sound suppressor is technically best in slot, the problem here is that firstly you have to use the shorter version of the handguard which has one less recoil reduction on it 
But the problem is that the Knight's Armament QDC flash suppressor is nowhere near as good. This is the old combination that used to be in the game before the muzzle brake was added in 1212. But as you can see, the muzzle brake isn't here. You can't use that in combination with the QDC on this weapon at the moment. So that means that also with this suppressor being extremely expensive, that the T-Lock is strictly better as a combination. Otherwise you'd use the QDC if you could use that brake, but we can't. So this is the better combination. The other thing that's kind of interesting about this handguard, so yeah, we can swap between the 8 inch and the 12 inch and we do get 1% recoil reduction from the 12 inch, but losing three ergo. I actually do think this is kind of an interesting choice. You can potentially choose to keep the shorter one because one recoil for three ergonomics, I actually think is about fair. And given that you need to use the suppressor to make this weapon at all, because there really aren't any unsuppressed builds that are any good. I do actually think that it is a valid choice if you want to keep this and keep your three ergonomics and lose your 1% recoil reduction because it doesn't really make that much difference. It's two recoil points, goes from 51 to 49 in this example. But three ergo matters more when you're running suppressed. So you also save 12K by not having to actually buy this. Normally the MCX comes with the eight inch handguard and so you save a bit of money doing this as well. So this is valid if you want to make the build a little bit cheaper. Finally, on the stocks, most people can't actually buy the Mesa Tactical Crosshair because it's quest locked from Skier and is super, super high level. And then most people also, unless you have Mechanic 4, you won't want to be buying the Strike Industries Advanced Tube from the Flea. I don't advise doing that at all. So unless you have Mechanic 4, in which case it's basically a no-brainer, then you have to step down to something like the Colt Buffer Tube, which is not that good. Now, the only important thing that I would note is that using the MOE Carbine stocks, which we'll use for the meta version, because I think it's just so much better on recoil versus ergo, this actually outperforms all of the standard stocks in terms of recoil. And yes, you get some ergonomics for some of the other ones, but I just don't think it's worth it. So even if you have to use the Colt, it's still better than any of the standard stocks for the MCX, in my opinion. Okay, so I'm going to swap this all back to the way that we had it a second ago, just to get it back to the minimum recall version so that we can see the full difference between the meta version or the, the version that I've been using at least and the one that is minimum recall. So yeah, we're starting with 30 ergonomics, actually 31 if we re-add the Chris Defiance front sight on. So we've got 31 ergonomics and 43 vertical recall. So in terms of what we want to change, first off, I think we should be looking at the vertical foregrip. The RK2, we pretty much always swap out for something else now because the ergonomics is so low. On this weapon, you can use the CQR. It's only certain specific weapons that you're allowed to use the CQR on. And this is actually better than the RK1 or the canted RK1. As you can see here, the canted RK1 would lose two ergonomics compared to this. And it's actually cheaper than that. And it's about the same price as the regular straight RK1. So this is actually a really good pickup. It's really good for recoil and it doesn't lose that much ergonomics compared to some of the really meta ergo grips. And so it's actually a really nice choice to have on here. The suppressor is fine. We can leave this and we can keep this here because there's a wonderful barter for this SIG suppressor at Skier 4 using Ravens. This only costs 30k. And as we saw, we actually got the other two parts with the basic build anyway. So there's really no need to change that. In terms of the stock, the way that I've been running it and the one that I think is probably the best is a Strike Industries Advanced Receiver Extension Buffer Tube. And then with, as I said, the MOEs. So you add this on the back. And then overall, we're getting now to 55 ergonomics and 48 vertical recall. So we've lost, what, five vertical recall, but we have gained an enormous amount of ergonomics in the swing, which I definitely think is worth it. As I said before, you could change over the handguard to the eight inch if you want three more here and add two to this, but between 55 and 58 versus 48 and 50, I think I'd take the very slightly lower recall at this point because now we have enough ergonomics to make this build feel pretty nice. So the next question is what does this cost? So obviously you want to be able to buy all of these things from the traders, but the stuff that I'm not going to include right now is the magazine because you might want to pick one up or just have one lying around. We actually get a lot of this stuff with the build, or hopefully anyway, if you look out for one. So the SIG taper lock, we didn't actually have to buy this, all that. And then we do need to get most of this other stuff. We don't need the barrel because we already had that. The SIG MTX, I'm just going to remove this for the time being. And then also the suppressor too, which we can add those back in later. So we're talking about 93,000 worth of mods. And that obviously doesn't include any tactical devices or any optics or any magazines. But 94Ks worth of mods. Then the MCX cost, depending on how much that is. If it's about 50K, that takes us to 143. And then the SIG Sour Suppressor using the Skier 4 Barter is 
raise another 30k so then that will take us to 173 which honestly is not actually that bad for a weapon like this this is pretty decent honestly this is pretty decent obviously if you have to buy it for another 30k up at like 80,000 or something then that'll add a little bit on to make it more like 200,000 overall but it's obviously an expensive ish weapon but given its performance and comparing that to the m4 which is well over 300 400 000 to make a, a meta modded version because the parts are so expensive i honestly don't think it's that bad before we get into some gameplay let's take a look at the ammo this is honestly one of the worst parts about the mcx and genuinely why i think it's not really used at all primarily we want to be using blackout ap because it's the only round that you can categorically call good in general 51 damage and 45 pen is decent, especially since 1212's armor restrictions and with the MCX's fire rate. The comparable round is M855A1 with 46 damage and 45 pen, so Blackout AP gives you an 11% bump on the base damage, and similarly to many 556 rounds, it has a huge fragmentation chance of 30%. When a round frags, it does 50% extra damage, pushing the average damage of this round up to 58.65, which is broadly an 8-shot kill without taking any body multipliers into account. It also gives you a real possibility to 2-shot the thorax through armor, Without fragmenting, 102 damage is enough of course, but when armor is applied, its damage mitigation if it's over 17% reduction means that you won't quite do enough to kill someone in two hits to the chest. However, with fragments across two shots, it's actually a 50-50 chance that at least one of the two rounds will fragment, and with that it totals 127.5 damage, so long as it penetrates, no armor mitigation is going to save you from that. It's all sounding quite good so far, but the issue with 300 AP is that firstly, it's from Peacekeeper 4, and you can only buy 90 rounds per trade of reset, and it's $6.18 per round. This really limits your ability to consistently use these weapons, not to mention being fairly expensive too, and leads us to consider stacking the bottom of our mags with the next best round, M62 Tracer. Confusingly named the same as the 762 NATO round, this is significantly worse than AP with only 3 more damage for 54 total and 34 pen. Bearing in mind that 545BT, M856A1 and AP20 slugs all have 37 pen, I consider 37 the baseline for real PvP as below this you start to have multi-shot issues with class 4 armour. Against a fresh class 4, 34 pen only gives you a 31% chance to defeat it on the first shot, versus 55% for the rounds with 37 penetration. The 34 to 39 region is extremely sensitive to changes in pen, as described in my video that I did on this subject a while back, and losing 3 pen in this range is actually a really big deal. The frag chance is also lower at 20%, and these rounds are super slow too with 442 meters per second, although that shouldn't really matter at close ranges. However, being purchasable at Peacekeeper 3 for $2.58 and putting in at the bottom of your magazines with AP on top should help to alleviate some of the supply issues with the good rounds and at least keep you firing something rather than simply taking in less magazines. Plus, this is the ammo that we would rather lose when we die. You can always repack some AP on top from the secure container if you fired a few bullets, but dying with three full mags of AP is your entire stack gone for potentially up to the next three hours. For the rest of them, I guess you could argue that BCP FMJ is not that far off M62 given it's already out of the good range versus armor and at 91 rubles is very cost effective, but the MCX is not really a budget gun as I said, so I wouldn't recommend it and the same for VMAX. I've never really considered Whisper seriously, but if you're into leg meta, I can see this maybe working. With 90 damage, this makes it superior to Warmage and kills in 5 leg shots, which is not very many at 800 RPM. I still think that the ACP Vector and the P90 are better for this if you're committing to it, the Vector for damage with Rip, and the P90 for fire rate and mag capacity, but I suppose it's an option. Overall, the MCX is a fun weapon to use. It just about squeaks in between the SMGs and other rifles, combining fast time to kill with decent penetration without stepping up to 7.62x39, but with the overall cost of the weapon, ammo, and limitations on its availability, combined with tricky horizontal recoil, I can't see it becoming much more used than it is now without some changes. We're now going to show some of the successful clips and as usual a big shout out to all my patrons who help keep the channel improving and to my Giga and Terra patrons who've gone above and beyond with their support so far. It really is invaluable. Oh, there, all well done there. Can't quite tell. Oh, the guy oh. There in the area. A terrible peak.
Let me get pincered, I feel. Oh, boys. Let's reload. We need to reload. Let's use this. My goodness. My goodness. People just cannot leave me alone, can they? Okay, let's go and see. Great, bud, you? Yeah, man. It's going good. It's going good. I'm just like... So excited about about like going full time and stuff. It's just like it's just sick. Oh, okay. So there's two boys dead here. Strand hog, MP7. Okay. Are we gonna die here? Okay, I'm scared now. <laughs> what it's all about, friends. What it's all about. Right. There we go. Me too for dog tags. Yeah, dog tags is the way. Right. Two so far. One from a friend. One from an airdrop. Whoa. We did it. The suppressor is glowing. Thanks for uh, thanks for joining on Patreon, dude. Appreciate it. Gonna have lots of uh, lots of cool stuff over there. I hope. I hope people enjoy. Where did these dudes go? Might take a while, but you can easily grab sixteen tags. Just play carefully. The shit is just so good. I think was there. Is there any more? Was it just a whoa? Gosh, that was hard to see. Am I going to die here? I just moved it all in there. You know what? I've died a lot. Let's at least attempt to take, to take a win, you know? Not easy to find one. I, I haven't found one either. I, I ended up doing exactly what you did with the... With the, the barter for the dog tags. It's really the only way. In my opinion. It's the only way. To get the arse ass. It's Whoa! Oh my god. Someone actually trying to exhale camp. 
Up there. Too high up to get it from below. Uh, let's see. I, I guess so. Oh, no. Maybe not. Oh, look at that. Nice. Well, normally, normally if people are lower level, I typically would leave their stuff. But given the guy is sat there actually camping with an SK, an SKS, or a shotgun or whatever it was, what was it, SKS? He can, he can lose it all. <laughs> right, I've basically got no armor left now. Alright, let's go. Another one! What the heck? What is going on? What is going on? Do you think these, these guys are friends? Generic bear rat. And his and his good mate Kank Circus End. There. Right, gonna be any more? Because I'm out of rounds. Let's do it. Let's do it. Anyone else left? No. Ah, oh, okay. That's goofy. That definitely is goofy. So if you learned something, please consider dropping a like and a comment on the video. To see when I'm streaming, you can follow me on Twitter and Twitch. Check out our Scav Talk podcast in the links below. And with all that said, I'll see you next time. And as always, have fun in your raids.